Welcome to the Lead Every Day Show. Our mission is to see a world well-led. And our strategy to get there? To empower leaders like you to lead every day. So let's get to work. Welcome to the Lead Every Day Show. We are talking uncommon greatness. Been talking it for a few days now. And we're excited that you've joined us today as we dive into these fundamentals of leadership. They're so important. I'm Randy Gravett. And I'm Mark Miller. And we're pumped up to uh, to be with you today. It's going to be a good conversation. I spent several years, uh, the last several years, I've had opportunities to work with several sports teams, professional teams, college teams, all kind of teams, high school. It's, it's been it's pretty neat to speak to their teams and everything. Uh, spend some time actually around these professional teams in particular. It got me thinking about these fundamentals. It's crazy how when you get with these high-level organizations, really the best athletes in the world, they're still working on the things that you and I worked on when we were little kids. Yeah, high-level like sport. NFL, Major League NFL, Baseball. NFL, Major League stars. Baseball. They're, they're doing the same things that we were doing when we were little kids. It's crazy you think they would be doing something much more important. They're really not. They're still practicing the blocking and tackling and, and all, all those fundamentals. Musicians are the same way. Uh, math students are the same way. It goes back to the numbers. I mean, it, it's, it's crazy how the fundamentals are so key in everything that we do. We're going to dive in. We've been talking this idea of seeing the future just in our last episode. We talked about that. Today, I want us to dive into what do we do to see the yeah, future. How do so, you do it? How do we do it? That's We, yeah. we promised them like the how side. So let's let's dive in and talk about that a little bit today. I'm, I'm excited. And today, our topic is remembering the past. I think if we're right. going to see the future – Sometimes we have to go back and remember where we came from. Isn't, yeah, isn't that and important? I think that may feel counterintuitive, but the best vision is always rooted and grounded in the past. Um, and so that, that's inappropriate. I think it's the only place to start that makes any sense when you're trying to figure out your preferred future. Yeah, it's, you hear people say all the time, you need to remember where you came from. And when I think back on where I came from, I just, even this, it, this seeing the future thing, uh, this topic, I remember uh, just growing up, my mom and dad, they, they were married for uh, over 50 years. It's crazy. It was just like, they just, you know, long time. But my grandparents on both sides were married for over 50 years. And and so it's it just gave me a picture of what you do in a marriage and what you don't do in a marriage. It was looking back. And so now it's it's been able, I've been able to actually learn a lot from looking at that. And there's all kinds of other things that you, you, your values, all kinds of stuff, but this, you know, I, in business, we want to talk about the founder story, right? It's sure. Wh- where did your company come from? Where did your team originate? Where did your 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 school start? All those kind of things. So I'm I'm excited to to talk a little bit here about remembering the past yeah. and the power of that for the well, leader that's listening. Let let's let's start with an overarching premise: the best leaders always learn from the past, mm. but they never live there. So yeah. we're not talking about going back to some. Uh, idealized picture of your past. And and you challenged me on this during COVID. Our vision for the future should never be a return to the past. That's not why we lead. Yeah. We lead to make things better, to, to help people grow, to help teams grow, to help organizations grow. But there are many, many clues in the past. And I think it starts with the founders. Yeah, I, th- I think so too. And, and you've used idealized. It's never idealized. Like when you look back, there's there's skeletons. Well, it, can in all, all those, it can be. It can be idealized. It's never, the good old days. The good yeah. old days are. I think we do glorify them, but but they're hard as well. And they're they're they're. I think you you said it. We we need to to learn what we can, but we, we want to yeah. make some change. So as you think back about some of the 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 things that you that you've experienced, uh, it go back to Chick Fil A. I mean, the mm-hmm. you had a great founder story mm-hmm. there, mm-hmm. and. And year after year, you know, you just, the years kind of go by. But but as you look back to the roots of those values and 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 all that stuff, the way you do business, I mean, there's still a lot of that just carried sure. over. Sure. And and I think to make this very pragmatic for for you guys that are that are listening or watching to this, I would encourage you to go back to your founders. Now, maybe you can talk to them. Maybe they sit in the office next to you, or you're on a Zoom call with them this afternoon. Um, but maybe they're not, and maybe they're retired, or maybe they're dead. But I would say go back and try to figure out what was their original vision? What was their passion point? What were the key strategies? Again, not to emulate those, but to have a deep understanding of the founder's intent. There may be lessons for you as it relates 
to the future? Can you read things they wrote? Can you listen to, to audio recordings? You know, yeah. back in the day, uh, there were still people <laughs> putting stuff on audio and it often came in little plastic boxes called cassette tapes, but yeah. you can still find those. Yeah. And, and listen to those messages and try to understand the heart and intent of the founder, uh, not as your stopping point, but as your launching point for your preferred future. Yeah. And I think sometimes we get away from our roots if we're not careful. And I would encourage you to go back and as Mark's saying, look at those founder stories, but you might even create some milestones along the way. There's a company we work with uh, here in Atlanta, actually, and in their office, it's pretty fascinating. You go there, they've got a, what I would just call a milestone map. I mean, it's, it's their timeline yeah. of their, mm -hmm. you know, they started, mm -hmm. I think back in the forties or fifties mm -hmm. and they've got their founders picture on there. And, but all along the way, all the CEOs right. and these different milestones when they hit different revenue goals, sure. all kinds of things along the way. But these right. these milestones can be really love that a, an important way for us to go back and root ourselves in who are we? Yeah, but I want to I want to raise the stakes on that because that's another of the best practices that we see in organizations around the world. Sometimes those milestone maps are exactly as you described, and and there's certainly value there. I would encourage you to put together a different milestones map. And it may include everything you just described, but it needs to include the failures, the setbacks, the lawsuits, the, uh, <laughs> yeah. the, the, the innovation that may not have made, the smaller innovations. And, and the, the purpose of this is, again, for context, historical context. Because once you create this more detail, the good, bad, and the ugly milestone map, I'd encourage you to step back and start looking for patterns. You may think, wow, innovation has been a, a key part of our history, but look how sporadic it is. Or look, it's been 20 years between those uh, inflection points. I wonder what we might learn for the future. Yeah. Since that's always good for us, could we figure out how to do that more often? Yeah. Or look how you responded to adversity. It's like, well, maybe we don't have to wait for external factors to create a sense of urgency. If you see that your organization historically responds well, and maybe you as the leader could turn up the urgency to create some of those breakthroughs. So yes, take the, the, all the good stuff on yeah. a milestone map and layer in all the hard, challenging, difficult stuff. Yeah. And you can learn a lot to help inform your future. Yeah. I think it's a good reminder that we're trying to see the future. We're I mean, trying remember, to see the future. Remember, that's what we're doing. And so this remembering the past is a great way to do that, good and bad. Well, there's one more little piece of the past I want to talk about before we go today. And that is the power of looking back to the, to the near past. Yeah, like, the immediate it's, it's past. It's easy to look back on, you know, people Decades. married 50 years and companies have been founded and all that. But but I think there's a lot of power in what happened just yesterday, kind or, of mindset, or this week. Or, yes. Or in our case, last night we had a we had a chance to uh, to to do an event last night, and we've I think we've already had maybe three meetings in since, less than twelve hours. In less and than we slept hours, some of that time, and we did sleep a little bit of that time. And so another group of our team has had a meeting about it, and we're we're constantly trying to what can we learn from that? How can we get right. better? And so I don't want I don't want us to leave today without reminding you that. You don't have to look back 50 years to learn from your past to think about where you want to go in your future. That that's a sure. that's a powerful mindset. And it's not either or. I think it's both and. Yeah, exactly. And so my encouragement to you to make this again very practical and very applicable is after your next presentation, after your next event, even a meeting, after, after next your meeting. next big meeting that yeah. you invested a lot of time and energy in, maybe it's just a meeting with your team to sit down with the facilitator or a key and trusted uh, team member and say, okay, what happened? What didn't happen? Why did it happen? What do we want to repeat? What do we want to certainly do differently? Yeah. And you don't have to overplay it. You don't have to spend a tremendous amount of time, but we've already, again, we've probably spent <laughs> an hour or yeah. two yeah. already and we've got about six or eight or 10 things we're going to do that we think differently. We can do, better we can do them better. Yeah. You learn from the past, but you don't live there. Yeah, that's, that's good. I, ho I hope you'll join us next time as we continue to have this conversation about seeing the future. We'll give you another practical way to do that tomorrow. Remember, the best leaders lead every day.